comprised of outcasts from across the galaxy, the Wild Bastards were once the terror of several star systems. That all changed when the overzealous magnate Jebediah Chaste took charge. Ruthless posses have scattered the Wild Bastards, most of whom are missing and presumed dead. Only two are still up and kicking, and their last desperate goal is to rescue slash resurrect their old allies and escape from Chaste's domain into the safety of a happy hunting ground known as the Homestead. As with Void Bastards, its predecessor, Wild Bastards is focused less on twitch reflexes or mechanical skill and more on tactical thinking. The player must chart a path across each planet, clearing it quickly before Chaste's minions show up. This means managing risk and keeping track of resources and health, both within each area and across planets. The biggest change in Wild Bastards has to be the outlaws themselves. Unlike the generic freeze-dried criminals and Void Bastards who were distinguished only by randomly generated traits, these are fully unique characters with their own weapons, upgrades, and personalities. Those personalities can clash at times, and mediating the relationships can be just as important as managing gear. Not only does this add a novel narrative element, but it becomes mechanically important as squabbling outlaws might refuse to work with each other at all. Seeking a cure for a terminal disease, you undertook a perilous journey to the metropolis of New Ark, a scientific city emerging from the darkness of superstition. But all that's just press. In reality, New Ark is a city struggling with poverty, crime, pollution, all the ills of an industrializing society. New Ark is also a city of secrets, some of which are darker than its societal decay. Between the magic-wielding agitators lurking in the shadows and the twisted creatures you only see out of the corner of your eye, there's something evil in New Ark, and you'll need to be the one to dig it up. New Ark Line promises everything you'd expect from a CRPG, a big world with lots of quirky characters to recruit, and a detailed character building system. The protagonist will eventually get to choose between a series of classes and subclasses which are evenly split between magic-oriented and science-oriented classes. Regardless of the path taken, players will have numerous ways to solve problems as they climb through the social strata of New Ark. It is also billed as a game in which the player's choices have a tangible impact on New Ark, so being a villain, which is always an option in any decent CRPG, will result in a far different world than that achieved by playing as a hero. Ringo is a young martial artist on a quest to find her missing brother. Along the way, she crosses knuckles with a shady humanoid wolf called Wolf. As it turns out, the two of them have exactly one thing in common. Each has a problem that can only be solved with the Wanderstar map, which has been torn to shreds and scattered to the winds. Setting aside their differences, they set out to recover the map fragments from the colorful villains who have absconded with them. Now, Wanderstars is a roguelike, but there's no deck this time. Rather than cards, Ringo and her various hangers-on accrue words. Some of these correspond to attacks or blocks, while others are modifiers. Each round, the player can select a base move and a certain number of modifications which increase damage, add elemental damage, or inflict debuffs. This allows the player to customize moves on the fly, switching to new moves and tactics each turn. The aesthetic design is the major standout feature of Wanderstars. While many games borrow the look of anime, nothing has ever gone this far to capture the feel, and not just because Ringo looks like a cut character from DBZ. The graphics have a gauzy, grainy feel that resembles something mastered on videotape. The music is bombastic, but with a distant, somewhat tinny sound. Add in the fact that the game is structured around episode-like chapters, and the fact that the long names of Ringo's custom attacks are very similar to the attack called common in shonen manga, and you have a real treat for the otaku set. Arik is the prince of a shattered kingdom, one left bereft of leadership since the disappearance of the queen. Aiming to reunite his family and repair the land, Arik sets off on his own to make right what has been torn apart. Aiding him in this quest is the Crown of Perspective, an artifact of his father's that grants remarkable power to the wielder. But the crown too is incomplete. For Arik to prevail, he'll need to find the gems that grant the crown its miraculous abilities. The goal of Arik and the Ruined Kingdom is to solve puzzles to get from point A to point B. The game has an isometric perspective, and the player can turn the camera at any time, but this isn't just to give a different angle on the puzzle. Shifting the camera also affects the world, changing gravity and causing moving objects to act in different ways. 
What you see on the screen is what's really there. So moving the camera so that pieces of a broken bridge overlap will allow Arik to cross it, even if those two pieces are actually far apart. As Arik collects gems for the crown, the powers available to the player also increase. Over the course of the game, the player will gain the ability to move objects around the map, give commands to mechanical servants, and move time back and forth. The variety of abilities could make for a diverse range of puzzles in the later areas.